Dietary supplements are regulated under the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act, which establishes legal definitions and label guidelines, but does not guarantee safety or effectiveness. So this month's theme is in support of Operation Supplement Safety. Our topic this week, vitamins for health enhancement and improved performance. Let's do this. I'm Danny Lebovitz, a registered dietitian, nutritionist, and fitness enthusiast who loves to eat. Welcome to Danny's Delicious Dish, where we get serious about food, fitness, and living better. Food brings people together, it nourishes our bodies, and influences how we learn, grow, and heal. We're going to take you from the classroom, to the gym, to the market, to the kitchen. Supplements can make health claims such as calcium helps build strong bones, but it cannot make therapeutic claims that diagnose, treat, or prevent an illness such as calcium restores bone loss. It's important to note that supplements require no pre-market approval and are assumed safe. In order to be taken off the market, the FDA actually has to prove that a dietary supplement is unsafe. So before you take any supplements, ask yourself these three questions. Is it safe? Is it effective? Is it contaminated? Today we're going to talk about the most commonly consumed vitamins, but you should know that as the warrior athlete, you can meet all your nutritional needs solely through food. You can meet all your nutritional needs every day through calcium-rich dairy products, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, lean meats and proteins, and your heart healthy fats. Vitamin C is an antioxidant that helps protect cells against free radical damage in the body. The body also uses vitamin C for immune function and for collagen to help with wound healing. Vitamin C is considered safe, but monitor for excess amounts of greater than 2,000 milligrams a day, which can lead to stomach upset. People use vitamin C to guard against exercise-induced oxidative stress and upper respiratory tract infections, but there's limited evidence for the enhancement of physical performance with respect to oxidative stress. One thing to note is that vitamin C is not effective for preventing colds, but it does decrease the duration of a cold. There are multiple food sources that provide vitamin C, including citrus fruits, red and green peppers, kiwi, strawberries, cantaloupe, baked potatoes, and so much more. There's no need to take a vitamin C supplement each day. In fact, the recommend dosage for women is about 75 milligrams a day and 90 milligrams of vitamin C for men each day. The average supplement is 250 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams, and you can even get that from food. So let's look at a few examples of what 250 milligrams of vitamin C looks like. One cup of strawberries, one cup of broccoli, and a half a cup of pineapple, or two clementines, 12 spears of asparagus, and a cup of mango. Vitamin D is important for immune support to fight infection and for bone strength. Vitamin D supplementation is considered safe, but high doses can be toxic when taken for long periods of time because excess vitamin D can be stored in the body. It's used for bone health and to decrease exercise-related inflammation. It's effective for treating individuals with low vitamin D status, especially during winter months for people who live in the northern half of the United States have greater amounts of melanin in their skin, or train primarily indoors throughout the year. One in four people living in the United States have low vitamin D levels. You can receive all your vitamin D that you need each day by exposing your face, arms, legs, and back to the sun between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. for 5 to 15 minutes at least two times per week. Do not apply sunscreen for this moderate exposure as sunscreen blocks the th synthesis of vitamin D or you can consume vitamin D rich foods. The recommended vitamin D intake each day is 400 to 600 international units. When you take a vitamin D supplement, it's around 600 to 2,000 international units. You can meet your needs every day by consuming around 600 international units. This is equivalent. One cup of milk, three ounces of salmon, and one cup of ready to eat cereal. Omega-3 fatty acids are known for their anti-inflammatory and anti-clotting effects with heart disease, as well as reducing the prevalence of depression. Omega-3s may also support infant cognitive and visual development. People use omega-3s to reduce inflammation, reduce the effects of oxidative stress, and counteract negative effects of strenuous exercise on the immune system. You need about 3,500 milligrams of omega-3s each week, which is equivalent to about 500 milligrams each day. If you had two of any of the three of these that I have here below, you would meet your needs for the entire week. You, four ounces of salmon, 
two tablespoons of flaxseed or one tablespoon of chia seeds will get you there. Glucosamine and chondroitin compose the tissue that cushions the joints in the body known as cartilage, and it's produced naturally in the body. It's considered safe with minimal adverse effects, and it's used to reduce joint pain and improve function and range of motion through the formation and cartilage repair, as well as increasing elasticity of cartilage. It may be beneficial for some individuals with moderate to severe knee pain, and improvement is typically seen between six and eight weeks. If no improvement is seen by eight weeks, continuous use is unlikely to help. Food sources of glucosamine can be found in the exoskeletons or outer shells of crustaceans, such as shrimp, lobster, crab, and crawfish. The meat itself contains little to no glucosamine. Chondroitin can be found in animal tissue, especially connective tissue such as the gristle. Amounts available in consumable foods is not associated with the medicinal quantity of dietary intake. Since you can't meet your needs of glucosamine and chondroitin each day through food, if you choose to take a dietary supplement, the recommended dose is 1,500 milligrams of glucosamine and 1,200 milligrams of chondroitin. If you choose to try any dietary supplement, such as vitamins, your best option is to choose one with a seal from a third-party verification agency, and be sure to discuss the safety with your healthcare provider. I'm Danny the Dietitian. Till next time, live deliciously.